Hey guys, this is Mr. Grice for Ms. Carranza and Mr. Grice's Algebra 1 class. Today we're going to be talking about the Unit 1 test review. Okay. Now for all the vocabulary, if you need assistance with that, make sure that you read the definition first and then try and figure out what the vocab word is. Okay. The answer key is up on the website. What we're going to be doing is going through some of these problems. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at number three. Which operation would you perform first in evaluating 28 divided by 4 minus 2 times parentheses 3 plus 8? So when we're doing this, we need to remember order of operations. The P stands for parentheses. Now that's not one of our options. So what is inside the parentheses that we need to do? And that is add. Let's look at four. Uh, 7.088 minus 2.64 all over 2 plus 4 uh, parentheses 3.1 minus 2 0.6. So remember, we're going to treat this like we have two separate problems, the top half and the bottom half. Since we're working with decimals, I want to double check that I'm doing everything right, so I'm getting out my calculator. We're going to do the top first, so 7.088 minus 2.64, and that gives us 4.448. Four point four four eight. Now, on the bottom, we need to do parentheses first. Now, I'm pretty sure I know what three point one minus two point six is in my head, but just to double check, and I was correct. So point five. Now, remember order of operations here. All right, we have to multiply. Multiplication becomes before addition, okay? So we have 4.448 to plus four times 0.5 is two, but just to double check. And then 4.448 divided by four, Plug that in your calculator and you get 1.112 is your final answer. All right, number five, 2x squared plus 3y squared if x equals 3 and y equals 2. Remember to use parentheses to plug everything in. x is 3, y is 2. So order of operations tell us to do parentheses first. 2 times 2 gives us 6. And everything else stays the same. So we did the parentheses. Now let's worry about the exponents. We've got two sets of exponents that we can do. 6 squared is 36. And 2 squared gives us four we need to multiply and we get 12 and then the last step is to add all right let's look at number six number six says bob has forty dollars which his parents gave him for christmas bob wants to buy a new pair of basketball shoes which costs a hundred dollars let x equal the amount of money he will need to save from his next three paychecks to buy the shoes. Which equation correctly represents this situation? Now, one of the key things I see right here is this word three. Looking at some of the answers, we can cross out A and B because they don't have a three. So we know that the total cost is $100. 
he already has forty dollars so we're gonna add the forty dollars and now the next three paychecks we don't know how much that is yet but that's what he needs to be saving okay so that's why c is your final answer there all right let's look at seven it says the number of students enrolled in ap psychology which is p is is four less than twice the amount of students enrolled in human geography. So one of the keywords right here is the word is, which means there's going to be an equal sign and we can cancel out that guy. Four less than less than that word tells us that we have to switch so the four needs to go to the back and saying twice the students in geography that's 2h so four less than twice the amount of students in human geography did i cross the wrong one out i did because that's supposed to be an equal sign. So B is the correct answer. Funny how it's the one that I crossed out that's the correct answer. Not bad. All right. Is x equals 3 a solution of 5x plus x squared equals 21? So to find out if something is a solution, you need to plug it in. X equals three. Do the exponent first. Then we can multiply. And at this point right here, you should know right away, is this a solution? No. Okay, now the key thing for these things is you guys need to be writing yes or no. Okay, x equals 5 here. Order of operations, we got to do exponents first. Uh, 5 squared gives us 25. Got to multiply and we get 50. And 50 minus 35 is 35. So is 35 greater than 35? And that answer is no, it is not greater than. Okay, translate into algebraic form. It says 2 less than a number is less than or equal to 16. Okay, less than, we have to make sure to switch. So my 2 goes to the back. It's less than or equal to 16. And a number is x. Okay, next one. It says 6 more than uh, the quotient of a number in 5 is 10. So once again, more than, we have to switch. So the 6 comes to the back. Quotient means to divide. And is All right, number 12, if you drove an average speed of 57 miles per hour for four and a half hours, how far could you travel? Now that's asking you to remember distance equals rate times time. Your rate is 57 miles per hour. Your time is four and a half. So just plug those numbers in. And all you gotta do is multiply. 57 times 4.5 gives you 
256.5, and it's asking you how far. So you drove that many miles. Terry can text 210 words in four minutes. How many words can she text in one minute? So we are finding the unit rate. To find the unit rate, divide those guys up. 210 divided by 4 gives you 52.5 words. It did not say it around in any of those, so we keep those answers. Okay, uh, 14 and 15, we're working on function notation. In both of those, it tells you what to plug in. So all you gotta do is plug in the number. If you wanna know four, order of operations, three times four is 12, and then you get eight. Once again, function notation, plug in. Five times three gives you 15. 15 minus two is 13. Okay, number 16, make an input output table for the function f of x equals three x minus three and graph the results. So for each one of these, you're gonna be plugging in whatever your input is. So I'm going to start right away just by rewriting the equation. Plugging in one, two, three, and four. Three times one is three. Three minus three equals zero. Three times two gives us six. Six minus three is three. Three times three is nine. Nine minus three gives us six. Three times four is 12. 12 minus three is nine. Okay, so making our graph. It's kind of hard to see some of these numbers right here. These are your points on the left. So it's one, zero, two, three, three, six, and four, nine. So our input is on the bottom. Our input is one. Our output was zero. Our input was two. Our output was three, three, six, four, Nine, and then the last thing you got to do is draw the line. All right, we're almost done. Now it says tell whether the relation below represents a function, yes or no, circle your answer. Now, every input needs to have exactly one output. And right there, there's a red flag because I see the number one twice and it goes to 20 and to 21. That is not a function. All right, and the last one, number 18, it says to state the domain and the range. The domain is your input, the range is your output. So all you gotta do is write those numbers down, put them inside the set, And that's it. So that's it for the chapter one, unit one review. Uh, if you guys have any questions, come see Ms. Kramza or myself. Otherwise, good luck with your chapter one test. Thanks, guys.